Welcome to another episode of Kitchen Ambush. We're live at our next local restaurant. New local ingredient, but a different twist on what that local dish will be because we're going to do a cocktail ambush and we're going to have a little bit of fun with uh, some spirits and some mixers and kind of start your day off with a cocktail. So I am Mark Conway. This is Vanessa Lane. And we are at Chow in Ghent, Norfolk area on Collie Avenue, uh, a favorite lot, hot spot of a lot of the locals here. Uh, they, one of the really cool things they do here is that they even have their desserts from another local business by some more of those people in the community. So it's kind of that nice blending of multiple businesses bringing right back into the people who come in the doors. And we've been to the sister restaurant already, which is T West. Which is amazing. So amazing. It is amazing. I find myself there eating tacos regularly. Uh, I can't really uh, not do that. So. We want to go ahead and introduce, so please say hello to everybody. Hi, my name is Priscilla Gregoire, and I am the bar manager here at Chow Restaurant and Bar. And this, we're kind of stoked, because this is the first time we've done a full-on cocktail ambush. Usually it's food, and then and last week with Finn, he decided to pair a drink with it, but today is all about the cocktails and the spirits. So, how long have you been here in Chow? I've been here for five years. Nice, and you said when we were talking kind of beforehand that you've literally worked your way from an entry into a, to a, the restaurant world all the way up to where you are now? I did. When I came on here, I started off as a server and I worked my way to the top. Tell us a little bit about kind of what makes Chow Chow. Well, Chow is, it's pretty much like the place where people come and, you know, you can get a great meal, you can get a great cocktail, you, can, you have a great beer selection. We have an awesome wine list. It's really cozy, and basically, it's like Cheers. It's like yep. where everybody knows your name. And that's one of the neat things about it, even any time I've been in. It's, it's just a lot of camaraderie, and it's not even necessarily the people that you came here with. It's you sit next to the bar, or you sit at one of the kind of the, the communal tables, and people just start talking. And what I also saw is that I was reading a little bit online was that not only do you have great food, but fabulous plate sizes so you yeah. encourage people to take it home oh yeah great leftovers you can get two three meals out of our dishes <laughs> easily and you can't really beat that especially when you're talking about fantastic cocktails <laughs> <laughs> she's like i'm kind of partial to that <laughs> now we were talking about because all around the restaurant you have chalkboards mm -hmm. and usually you'll go into places and you'll see one or two chalkboards but you have chalkboards everywhere and they've really kind of gone next level because you have a server that is really an artist mm -hmm. and has done beautiful artwork all around the building. Yes, not only has she done beautiful artwork in this building, but she's done things for me, like creating stencils for me to put koi fish on, like egg white foam drinks. She's insanely good. Her name is Melissa Powers, by the way. Hi, Melissa. Hey. Uh, you know, and that's kind of that neat thing is You'll find that a lot of times at restaurants that, you know, people or the servers or the cooks or the, the staff or the management all have these other hidden talents. Mm. And when they come to the forefront, they really kind of bring it all together on what makes a restaurant a restaurant, especially kind of having that, like you said, that cheers feeling. Oh, yeah. You know, and the idea to have a cocktail that has a stencil on top is kind of, to me, that next level of you see people with, talk about cappuccinos or the artwork on a cappuccino. That's fine and dandy, but a cocktail that looks pretty amazing, that's kind of where it's at. So what is your favorite spirits to work with? Um, I'm partial to rum and gin. Rum and gin. I think there's a lot of people that would probably be partial to that with you. <laughs> so like, what are some of your specialty cocktails on the menu? Mm. Um, my most popular cocktail on the menu right now is called the Lucille. Okay. Ooh. It is made with uh, Brugal Añejo rum. It has rosemary simple syrup, lemon juice, and orange marmalade. Wow. And we garnish it with a little strip, a sprig of rosemary. So why is it called Lucille? Um, well, it started off, I was doing this um, series every Sunday where um, I would make Walking Dead cocktails, and people would come into the bar, and they would watch the show and enjoy my drinks. And, um, enjoy the Megan, show a little more. Negan, the character on The Walking yes. Dead, has this bat called Lucille, 
and uh, I decided to put the rosemary sprig on the top to kind of emulate the, the spikiness of the barbed wire on the bat. And that, I mean, that works perfect. And, and what's great, and again, you're, you're coming back to, you know, people coming in and kind of making this second home. Like, I usually just say, what spirit do you like? And I can create something to your flavor choice. So you really kind of take it more of, you know, looking at what their, their palate likes, what they drink mm -hmm. at home, what they drink elsewhere. And then you'll go and just build an entire custom cocktail around them. Yep, they usually just say, P, play your greatest hits. Mm -hmm. so, wow. That works. So now when you come to Chow, you know, to either get a Lucille if you're a Walking Dead fan, or just say, play your greatest hits. Hey, yeah. you can't get any better than that. Wow. So, and, you know, you guys carry, you know, some of the local beers, and you have the local beers on tap from the breweries. I mean, I see Smart Mouth. Uh, that's another thing about going to a local restaurant is you're almost always going to see local beer, you know, and that you're always going to see locally sourced products where some of your chain restaurants are, are carrying whatever their national brands are. And I read on one of your boards in the back about being really cognizant and, and how important local sourcing was to you guys. Oh yeah, we are very um, we are very supportive of the local businesses around here, and uh, women-owned small businesses too. Absolutely. Yes. And, you know, I looked at your desserts come from Elite Custom Cakes, mm -hmm. and I've had those. I've had several of their cakes before. I had the one of their uh, their Dolce de Luce over at T West. Mm -hmm. And I mean, that's a phenomenal cake. And again, oh, yeah. another local business you've paired with. Oh yeah. So that allows you guys to really give out really tasty, delicious desserts. Oh yes. Without all the having to make tasty, delicious desserts. Oh yeah, we carry their um, peanut butter pie. Oh, I so saw good. that sitting up there. Oh. I was looking at this list and you know, I saw the hummingbird cake and hummingbird cakes are one of my favorite things. Mm -hmm. So, and you have a, a great list. Your menu's very kind of, uh, it's got really home feel type products, and then you do some twists on some things too. Oh yeah, I like to call it um, Southern flair, like Americana refined. You know, that's pretty much the explanation I give people. I like it. Well, I'll tell you what, we're gonna show you the secret ingredient so that we can have our first cocktail ambush and see what kind of cocktail you can come up with. So we've got the box. Drum roll. What could it be? Inside the magic box. This is an ingredient we've actually used on a prior show on a dish, but I thought it'd be really interesting to see what it could be done on a cocktail. And that is Ames Hot Southern Honey. Ooh. He makes probably one of my favorite honeys, and I've had them from all over the place. And what I love about it is it's not that sickeningly sweet, you know, overproduced or over, you know, production honey. And the chilies are not just hot for the sake of being hot. Mm. It's like that creeping heat, very smooth, uh, I wouldn't necessarily say subtle, but kind of perfectly placed. So I'm going to give that to you. So and you have a shot to try it and create whatever your signature ambush cocktail is going to be. And that's my cue. I'm going to get out of your guys' way, but I'll be back. You'll be back. To taste. Remember, she's going to come back to taste, but again, this is a live show. We're on Facebook right now. Send in your comments, your questions, highlights. We want to see them on air, and we're going to give shout outs and say hi to everybody. All right, let's see what you got. All right. So when you're, does, you know, when you're kind of putting a drink together, I'm going to jump to this side. When you're putting a drink together, where do you start? Do you start with flavor profiles? Do you start with a particular spirit you want to use? Um, as soon as I saw this, I knew exactly what spirit I wanted to pair with it. I was thinking gin or tequila. With oh, this. nice. Yeah. Especially with that so, heat in the background. Oh, yeah. You see, you know, tequila always goes well with that. Mm hmm. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so, Vanessa will be very ooh. happy about the fact that tequila is being used. I think you literally just hit on her favorite spirit. <laughs> All right. So. So, have you made honey drinks before, honey based drinks? Um, well, we have a honey simple syrup mm -hmm. in house nice. that we make um, our lemongrass old fashioned with. Oh, I like it old fashioned. Yes. And, uh, oh, that's not going to come out. Maybe if I do this, it'll come out a little better. There we go. What other kind of, you know, you talked about the Lucille. 
and you know building to people's palates are there any other drinks you've created that you thought were really really fun um probably my favorite cocktail right now that i have on the menu um is the vixen it is a negroni variation and um it has uh, botanist Isla Gin, uh, yellow chartreuse, Aperol, and Vittori dry vermouth. Oh, wow. Yeah. It's really pretty. That does. It sounds like really, you know, light but crisp. Mm-hmm. Now, have you had some drinks that you've tried that didn't work? Um, well, there's always some trial and error. And yes, oh, yeah. I have made some disgusting swills in my life. <laughs> <laughs> but um, what was one of the, the the classic ones that you just go I never want to do that again a classic cocktail or just a, a drink that you came up with that just sticks out to you that's like I am not ever going to do that again had to be this um syrup that I attempted to make <laughs> it was like a jalapeno a charred jalapeno syrup okay yeah and I tried to do an old fashioned with it and it was disgusting <laughs> I mean, the syrup was really cool. It had that char, and it was spicy, and I really enjoyed it. Right. But mixing it together with the other accoutrement was not... Just didn't happen well. Didn't happen well. <laughs> yeah, I, I, you know, everybody, every chef or, you know, mixologist, they all have those things. that just don't seem to work the way you want them to. It'll sound great in theory in your head, and then you make it and you're just like, what was I thinking when I did that? Oh yeah. <laughs> so what have you got in there so far? So, um, I have gin, lemon juice, a little simple to cut that, the spicy honey. Right. And that's simple syrup. So it's basically a gin sour with the spicy honey in it. Mm -hmm. And. Oh, uh, what do you got there? Do something fun with a jalapeno. And, the, you know, jalapenos are just that. They're always fun. I agree. All right. Now, do you do a lot, you know, with making sure that you're as important as the cocktail is, and the, co the garnish for cocktail seems to be just as vital. Oh yes, it really is. What are some of the fun ones you've used before that have really kind of caught people's attention? Fun garnishes? Yeah. Um, a brulee fig was like, oh, a, nice. like a real ooh-ah. <laughs> right, yeah, I could see that. Oh, so now you're bringing out the torch. Mm -hmm. I like where this is going. And when you did that brulee fig, you did you do that right in front of people to kind of give them that showstopper? Uh, no, it was it was more to stage a cocktail for photography. Okay, cool. And I bet that taste, I mean, figs alone have just a beautiful flavor to them. Oh, yeah. What kind of drink did that go with? It went with a, a drink that I made called um, Dr. No-No. It was a... It's a rum cocktail with Mount Gay XO, fig shrub, orange bitters, and a little splash of lemon. Nice. So you get a little acidity in there, kind of kind of ties it all together. Oh yeah. Very cool. So what would you call this cocktail? Inferno sour. An inferno sour. Mm -hmm. That is outstanding. I mean, it, it, when I eat, when I have my you know the dishes I leave, I love spice, and I always like to find those cocktails and those drinks that have that same kind of spice and heat content, mm -hmm. but so many of them are just, okay, great, they're gonna blow your palate out with just an insane, you know, hot for being hot, but when you find those ones that have that balance, you see so many people scared to go that route, scared to try it, mm -hmm. but most people, when they do try that cocktail that has that heat, end up loving it. Oh, yeah. What do you got? We got a lot. Oh, you got a lot. I got a lot. So I've got Edward's story online. Hey, he Edward. says, good luck, Prissy. Oh, I've thanks, Ed. <laughs> I've also got Megan Glover, who says, yay, Priscilla. I am so proud of you. Oh. And then we've got Gigi watching again. Gigi is online. Of so. course, Gigi. We're hey, making Gigi. cocktails. Hi, Gigi. 
And, well, Gigi knows her cocktails, though. Yes, she does. She right. loves her cocktails. <laughs> Fantastic. Well, it's good to hear from everybody. And Gigi is one of the people we met at the World Food Championships oh, cool. uh, down in, in Orange Beach. So it's fun that, you know, that when you get to do things like this, you, you never know who's watching from where. That's true. So, all right, uh, Vanessa, do you want to try some cocktail? She, like, ran off before the, the cocktail <laughs> trying portion ever took place. So I'm going to give you first honors. Oh, goodness. <laughs> and, it, and it's tequila. It's my favorite. No, it's, it's actually gin. gin. Oh, uh, you changed it up, gin. Oh, I still have gin. Well, yeah, I was going to say, yeah, she's not going to turn the cocktail. cocktail. All right. All right. All right, let's hear what your thoughts are. That's super smooth. It's really good. Oh, it's it's good it's, it's it's good. It's really good, and I it love smells. That when you charred that jalapeno, you get that little bit of smell to it before oh, yeah. you drink the cocktail. So you kind of your your palate gets ready for okay jalapeno. I'm gonna get some heat out of that. It's super smooth. Yeah, this is one of those drinks you don't need to be afraid of. Like when you come in to to try a cocktail at a place, don't instantly go. I'm not a big fan of spicy. I, you know that kind of stuff's gonna you know, it's gonna be too hot for me. The lemon really cuts it beautifully. Mm -hmm. You still get the heat from the honey and the sweetness from the honey, but you don't get overwhelmed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a fantastic drink. And what I like about it is, 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 you guys keep talking. is gin can be a little overpowering, just like tequila. Mm -hmm. People are like, oh, I don't like gin, or oh, I don't yep. like, I don't like tequila. It's quite floral. It, but that, yes, you could give to someone that wanted wanted to try their first alcoholic drink, mm -hmm. and they would be pleasantly surprised, yeah. going, you know, it's a yeah. really mild tasting, you know, alcoholic beverage concoction. It's it's fantastic. <clears throat> And it's it, fantastic. And that's the same goes for someone who was not, wasn't a gin drinker. Because I'll be the first to say, I'm not a gin drinker. It's usually the, the last thing that I will go for is a gin drink. But that is so well balanced. And so just, you know, the, the clarity of it. And you kind of pick up those subtle hints of each item that you put in mm -hmm. without any one of them being too much. And oh, what, yeah. I, what I like about it, it, it's a nice pairing because some people do like those bitter drinks. Mm -hmm. And I'm a sweet drinker by nature. Mm -hmm. I mean, so, I mean, you could just IV it basically into me. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but for some people that, that don't like either or, it's a nice in between. It's got it a is. little bit of, oh, yeah. a little bit of sweet, a little bit of bitter. And it really, it's, it doesn't have, you know, you, you see the jalapeno on top, you know that it's got the, the Ames Southern Hot Honey in it. You know, but you're not getting this robust heat. It's so mild and so kind of gentle, but it's that it is warming. Mm -hmm. You know, and on a day like today where there's literally snow on the ground again, to come in and have a drink like that is, is absolutely perfect. And you really could put that with really just about anything you wanted to eat comfort food wise. Oh right? yeah, definitely. This comfort food, you know, people usually just throw hot sauce all over yes. it anyway, and you know. Why not just go ahead and set the palate with a nice hot spicy drink? There you go. And then <laughs> kind of come up, you know, bring the food in that way. Right, right. Mm -hmm. So and great for before dinner, great during, and even great after. It's after, it's, it's so smooth. You know, really good. Watching a game, watching one of the shows you guys put up here. Uh, now I did hear you guys do a special kind of brunch. Ooh. Yes, we do. So tell us about that brunch, because well, this would be perfect <laughs> for that brunch. Um, we do a drag brunch every month. Mm -hmm. um, we do a lineup of four drag queens. It's they're so hilarious. <laughs> so it's just a good time all the way around. Oh yeah, it's a big party, pretty much. So once a month. So when's the next one coming up? It's this Saturday. Oh, this Saturday. So you've got a, a, a drag brunch at Chow. What time does it start? It's on Saturday, and it starts at 11 a.m. So nice. at 11 a.m. this Saturday at Chow will be their next drag brunch, and. I mean, if you haven't been to one, it is. It's hysterical. It is the biggest party you can think of without calling it a party. Oh, yeah. It's funny. It's comical. You come in and have a cocktail, uh, especially something like this. Or 10. I or, agree or with 12. you. I agree yeah. with you. Or 10. <laughs> you can go start your own internal punch card. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, you know, it, it's just that time to have that camaraderie with the people who live around you. Oh, yeah. you know, great time to meet people, get to know people, uh, but just really enjoy another great local spot. And you guys have a killer brunch menu. Yes, we do. That pairs nicely with cocktails. So that, that begs the question, what is your favorite brunch item on the menu? Yeah. The steak crepes. Mm, See, yummy. you just can't go wrong when you say steak or crepes. 
But when you put the two together, there's just a lot of happiness. Mm. Oh yeah, nice with the cocktail. With a cocktail. Mm -hmm. So it gives the excuse. You really good with that. That would be good. Mm -hmm. Steak with a nice kind of you know heat infused jalapeno cocktail. I would be real okay with that. Mm -hmm. You know, so you're looking at a killer combo of well, again flavors that you know it, that gin. When you so when you went for the gin, I was like, I don't know. I don't know how I'm gonna you know feel about that one. But literally, it came out stellar. Thank you. So. I will say that is another wildly successful ambush. All right. Out of the park. And so, again, how can they find Chow on social media? Um, you can find us on chownorfolk.com. That's our website. Or um, find us on Facebook. Like us on Facebook. Like us on, We're no, also like, on Instagram, I think. Yes. So yeah. look them up on their website, on Facebook, and on Instagram. Come check out the Drag Brunch on Saturday. And... At the, you know, at the very least, you're driving around, you need a break, it's been a rough day at work, or it was a great day at work, and you want to get some people together, this is a spot for you to do that. And I'll tell you, just come in and ask you to play your favorite hits. And what are we, <laughs> we going what to what call this hit? What are we going to call this? That's the Inferno Sour. Inferno Sour. The Inferno Sour, a new favorite of Team Ambush. So come in and see Priscilla, have a cocktail, have a great time with some great food. And... You know, again, go to Facebook, YouTube, find us there, like and follow us so that you get to see more local restaurants, more local cocktails. We're definitely going to be looking out for more local cocktails. Uh, and you can find us at YouTube at YouTube.com slash Kitchen Ambush. Same with Facebook and Instagram and Twitter and whatever the next social media thing they come up with is. And we're looking forward to seeing you again soon. I'm yep. Mark Conway. I'm Vanessa Lane. And I'm Priscilla Gregoire. Ask for her greatest hits, and we'll see you next time. See you soon. That's the new thing. <laughs> Come and get your greatest hits. <laughs> I would start thinking now.